Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so very much for joining us on another edition of Open Tab. My name is Jeff Bacalar, and with me this week is David Katzmeyer, our television expert. Uh, actually, expert? I feel I'll like expert. expert is doing you a disservice, though, Ooh. sir. Wow. Well. Because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because I like to refer to you as the best TV reviewer on Earth. Wow. Is that Earth spontaneously created by a computer every <laughs> time you launch into it? We'll get to that very right. soon. All right. Proceed I'll, I'll take it. I'll take I like it. where your head's I'll at. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, best TV reviewer on Earth. You have that kind of power here. Make sure you take advantage of it by chiming in in that little box below, wherever you're watching this thing, uh, and ask questions. You got comments? Bring them on. Mike Sorrentino is here, and he's going to be watching hey. the chats and the tweets and the and the the Snapchats and the Instagram <laughs> stories. We're in the uh, YouTube chat, the live stream chat. I'm chatting with some of you all right now in the YouTube chat. So please, please, please join our show by talking to us, and I'll bring you in as much as we can. Please, <laughs> three pleases. Three. Triple. Um. So make sure you do that. Hashtag open tab. You can do that if you want, or just type into the chat field. Uh, we are going to cover a wide gamut of topics today. This week we're talking, first off, about rivalries in the tech industry mm. and what that means for you, right? That's when you bash the rivalries together. Right? Mm. Rawr, rawr. It's like the Mortal Kombat the fight screen. Um, Gloves are off. So format wars like blue remember Blu-ray versus H D V D? Remember <laughs> that old media. that old chestnut? Yeah. Uh Let's talk about something that you've been dealing with for some time. I just dealt with recently with the yes. Xbox One S review, and that is HDR. So, so cats. Yeah, that was a trial by fire, huh? Explain. It took us like in two hours ago, I think. So it was crazy. Yeah. What is HDR for people who don't know? What is so, HDR 10? What is Dolby Vision? What is all that junk? So the first thing, you know, HDR is high dynamic range. Okay. Just like the HDR setting on your phone, the name, but very much nothing like it in reality. <laughs> okay. So don't confuse it with HDR on your phone or photography or whatever with those crazy effects. And, you know, they even have video games back in the day that had HDR effects you turn on or off. It's like, why couldn't they use a different three-letter combination? No, super high dynamic range is what I told them to use, and they didn't want to use it. Well, I don't understand yeah. that. Okay. Um, so anyway... HDR is what we're stuck with, right. and right now in the market, there's actually two different formats of HDR. There's okay. HDR10, which is just called HDR, generic HDR, and then there's Dolby Vision, which of course, uh, everybody knows Dolby, right. uh, kind of runs the show with audio and theatrical video and pretty much everything in Hollywood. So they have a big name brand advantage. Uh, these two formats are not mutually exclusive, so okay. you can have a TV that supports both, or you can have a TV that supports one or the other. Right now, Sony... Samsung, and most everybody else, except for Vizio and LG, only support HDR10. Vizio and LG support Dolby Vision. They paid, you know, Dolby, uh, you know, their, their licensing fee. They have this ability to take these Dolby Vision titles and play them. So right now you can get HDR from Netflix okay. if you have one of these TVs. Right. You can also get it from Amazon. They support it as well. Both guys support both formats. Good. So if you have a Sony TV, you'll just get a little thing that says HDR. But if you have a Vizio or LG TV, it'll say Dolby Vision because they prioritize Dolby Vision. If gotcha. a TV can do both. And then Vudu, which is a service that Walmart runs that's similar, they only have Dolby Vision right now, which is interesting. Huh. So and there's different studios that support different ones. I've looked at both. The difference is really hard to tell right now. I think we might see some more differences emerge as the master studios figure out how to sure. make, it, make it pop a little bit more. But the real thing to know is that any HDR really is a, a good picture quality improvement. Right. And you and I were watching it. You yes. can tell the difference. There a is bit. a difference. Yeah. It's subtle. Yeah. It's there, though. It's not going to blow your mind. It's right. not, I mean, remember when people, when HD first came out, people were like, well, standard def and HD are not that different. Or, you know, my Blu rays look a lot like my DVDs. It's not as drastic of a difference as that. It's, there's so, a diminishing return sort of thing. Absolutely. Because yeah. at the end of the day, regular Blu ray looks freaking phenomenal. Yeah. So an HDR Blu-ray looks even better, provided that your TV is good enough to make it look better. Right, and that's where so, it gets a little cloudy, right? Like, yeah. Like we just discussed, every TV manufacturer seems to have like a different sort of idea of like what they want to support. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that like someone could buy a TV and get screwed out of the format that ends up maybe winning this sort of situation? So I think what's going to happen, and this is 
pretty pretty standard. It, HDR10 is is required by the uh, by the, the the consortium that came with 4K Blu-ray. Okay. So it's it's if if there's a 4K Blu-ray disc out there, which is the only way to get HDR, uh, you know, aside from streaming right now, mm -hmm. it's gonna be. Uh, HDR10. So, and and every TV out there, Vizio literally last this week rolled out a firmware update that allowed their TVs to work with HDR10. Okay, so great. now all these HDR TVs all work with 4K. So you can't get screwed. Right. So you're not going to get screwed. But there is a possibility that for whatever reason, Dolby Vision stuff might look better. Or if, for example, you want to watch something on Vudu that's Dolby Vision only, right. For as long as they maintain that exclusive, although I don't think it's going to be very long. So you might actually end up, uh, if you have a TV that can't do Dolby Vision, not being able to see all the available content. That's the case right now for okay. Sony and Samsung viewers. But it's not that big of a deal because that stuff is also available on other services and non-Dolby Vision. So I think these two are going to coexist a little bit like DTS and Dolby Digital, which are the two audio formats that every receiver they can They coexist. Now. Yeah. And, and, it, and it all works. You know, But there isn't, uh, there's very few receivers out there that are only one or the other right, right now. So I think next year, the year after, you're going to start seeing TVs that will do both like LG and Vizio do this year. So. Okay, so this doesn't necessarily have to do anything with HDR, but mm -hmm. it is in your realm. The question I get asked a lot by people who are the sort of layman of mm -hmm. the tech world, my basically my friends. Yeah, um, wonderful and I, people. What's that? Wonderful people. Wonderful people, yeah, but just don't necessarily know how, which side of the Blu-ray is has the data on it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the question I get asked the most is, when do we stop being able to see difference in resolution. You mean like how close do you have to be? No, no, no. Like after 4K will be 8K. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? No, well, that's 16K? We're already there. Well, no. <laughs> I feel like we're there. I feel like 8K from what I, I've read a few sort of like ophthalmologist, you know, expert sort of, your brain's just simply not going to know the yeah, difference yeah, yeah. after a it's while. It's chart thing. Is it 8K? Like 8K seems vision. to be well, the threshold. The thing is, H, it's, it's actually already happening because if unless you're sitting really close to a 4K TV, you're not going to see the difference right. between really good 1080p, which is Blu-ray, right. and 4K yeah. because your eyes are not sharp enough to resolve the difference. Right. Plus, moving video is a lot more difficult to resolve, and the fact is, you know, it's not going to be the very highest quality anyway. Sure. So if you look at Netflix 4K versus 1080p Blu-ray, often the Blu-ray looks better because right. there's less compression, and you know, it's 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 not about the the number of pixels. And so we say, like, when you have a 65-inch TV, unless you're sitting, like, six feet, seven feet away from it, which is hella close to yeah. a gigantic TV like totally. that, you just can't see the difference for most people. If you have great vision, sure, you'll see the difference. If you're watching really high-quality content, sure, you'll see a little difference. But, again, 1080p Blu-ray looks freaking awesome already. People, I feel like people want that feeling they got when they went from SD to HD. Yeah, it's not, it can't happen. You, just like you'll never create that first time you right. had a taste Which of the poison. Which is like, yeah, pulling off the clouds it's and never going, gonna wow, happen. this is amazing. And the other thing is, right now, even 4K is never, it, it's going to be a really long time before it's broadcast TV. Yeah, so sure. right now, TV broadcasters are barely doing 720p and 1080i. Yeah. And those are the high def formats. And once, you know, when, when are we going to get, there's some smattering of 4K stuff you can see on TV, but it's going to be a long time before they change all the trucks, the cameras, oh, the forget production it. Stuff. Let's just mm -hmm. skip and go to 20K and just be yeah, done it, with it. At this point, it, it, you wouldn't see a difference. You wouldn't see a difference. But that's guys, not going to oh. stop them from coming out with it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. How, how long do you think, Agent 79 or Chaz are wondering, like, how long do you think even this HDR thing would last? Because if he, he wants to buy a TV, mm -hmm. he wants to make sure that it's actually a good investment for him. And I guess he'd be worried that like HDR, it was just going to replace the next best thing. Yeah, HDR is a big deal. I, I, the thing is, we spent a lot of time crapping all over 4K because you really couldn't see the difference. With, with HDR, you can see a difference. There yeah. is a difference because it's not resolution, which is basically limited by your eyesight and the seating distance more color and the size now. of the TV. Yeah. It's, you, you mentioned wide color gamut. That's a really, it's a difference. You can see it when you look at, you know, the, the trees look greener. There's... Right now, the HD standard is pretty limited in the color. It's based in like you know the 70s and earlier in terms right. of what the TVs could reproduce. They're a lot better now. They can get a lot wider color. That's in HDR, and then the dynamic range, which makes you know highlights glint and it makes the, the clouds look more defined. Yes. Things like that that are again relatively subtle. Subtle, but, but it's an it's much more of an improvement than from going 1080p to 4K. Absolutely, I totally agree with that. You showed me a scene in in the Revenant yeah. that is very very By indicative. The way, the Revenant is the best home video content I've ever seen, period. Wow. The 4K Blu-ray of The Revenant is unbelievable. It's Cause, yeah, because he just did a great job of filming it in HDR, yeah. in, out, in, in natural lighting. In you understanding. Know, if you haven't seen yeah. that film, 
treat yourself. It, huh. it, it, even on a 1080p, you know, regular TV, it looks phenomenal. It's so are movies filmed like specifically in HDR? Or do you think they film like a couple resolutions above and then bring it? Well, again, down? HDR is not necessarily about resolution. It's about the capturing of, of the dynamic range, which is again the, the range from from absolute white to dark, and it's also capturing the color. And all these cameras now, all these digital cameras. Can, Aris and Sony, all these the Hollywood cameras are way capable of capturing. Totally, it's that transfer. Yeah, so getting that whatever the camera can see right. to your screen is the is the question. That's what HDR comes closer to than current 1080p. Correct me if I'm wrong. HDR in a nutshell, when it comes to the dynamic range sort of stuff, mm -hmm. the analogy I I tried to give somebody was like, okay, let's say you had like 10 shades of darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Like 10 shades of gray. Okay, HDR gives you a thousand. Yeah. For for all intents and purposes, like that, you're basically getting the ability to see that much more of a difference between total white and total mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, it it expands the range and expand it, it 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 increases the number of steps in that range. Right. Like f stops on a camera sure. is one of the analogies that they use. But it also makes the top end of that range potentially a lot brighter. Sure. And so what you can do is have like if you envision like sun as a as a plane turns, sun strikes the the wing of the plane and it, this bright kind of pop. Yeah. HDR captures that. Uh, much better. I mean, HD can't capture it. Sure. So, and 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 the, the whole format is designed to transmit those highlights and give you that sort of feel. And that's why Revenant is so good because it's all outdoor natural lighting stuff sure. that you're used to seeing. And it's one of these things where if you see it side by side, it's like wow. You know, it, it does make a difference. There's a difference. We'll and get to more of that when we get to the uh, Xbox One S stuff that we'll talk about a little later uh, in the program because there is some relevancy yeah. there with. Mm -hmm. uh, what that console can do. But first, we're going to introduce our new segment <laughs> that mm -hmm. we did a couple of weeks ago. It's our drink segment, our nerd concoction segment. Mike made up a drink after trying out the No Man's Pie yeah. at, at the loading bar in London. Yes, it's a great video gaming bar that Look has at this thing. consoles. That drink tastes like a strawberry cheesecake. Oh. Has like actually has semi soft cheese in there oh. and jelly, oh. but it, it comes together really really nicely. Yeah, <laughs> I did not make that. You did not make that, <laughs> but you ate, you drank, and ate that. Instead, I've made the No Man's Sky Breeze, so, which I'm calling it. So the No Man's Sky Breeze has one ounce of vodka, one ounce of Malibu, one ounce of orange juice, and one ounce of raspberry lemonade with a splash, just a splash. <laughs> Of strawberry margarita mix, oh or you could use grenadine for the coloring. Yeah, it's to help make it reach around pink. So it's equally some alcoholic, definitely sugary. Yeah, that's fine. Everyone's wow. goal in life is is to is to get that definitely pink. Grab this. this is the polar you want that pink. <laughs> yeah, no, I, my my goal is. To I don't know if you have a good view of that's this or the not. Exact opposite right here. Of okay, so there you go. The port. So we're gonna. I love the color. You really did capture wow. the no man's sky pink. That was the goal, to Thank hit like you, this sir. spacey sky. That hold on, beautiful. you gotta hold it with a pinky up. <laughs> pinky All right, it up. So we're gonna taste test this live right now. Wait, check out my pink, hot pinky action. While we're here, hi Will, I'm not playing RuneScape. Just cause that's what the chat's currently saying. They're like, oh, Red Shoot dude's playing RuneScape. <laughs> nope, taking your questions. I like that it goes down to the stem, it goes all the way down the stem. Very this is nice. a high class. Plastic. Here's a plastic <laughs> yeah, flute it is. here. Sweet. Ah, All right, cheers, so gents. cheers cheer to No them. Man's Sky Breeze. Okay. Hmm. That tastes like a beach punched Ooh. me in the face. Wow. <laughs> it's extremely sweet. Oh, I'm wow. I'm going back to the beer, but you know what? If I started with that, that would be the tactic. You know? <laughs> this is a vacation mm -hmm. drink. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's the, like the lay by the pool, right, here or go. maybe through space. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah we have a little. Here, just pop that yeah, for just, for, just go, go for atmosphere. That. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Whoop. There you go. Now, now we're on vacation. Absolutely. Can we get a little Hawaiian? There you go. We've discovered a new planet. It's called Aruba. Ah, planet great. Aruba. Well, thank you for that, Mike. That was very good. You're welcome, guys. Thank you for trying it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being <laughs> guinea pigs. Thank you for my guinea pigs for this. <laughs> um, do we have more uh, things in the chat room right now? Or do you want to shout uh, out some people? Let's do a few more shout outs. Uh, thank you guys so much. This YouTube chat's really active today. So yeah. please continue our uh, questions. We're heading into the Xbox One, PS4, um, and No Man's Sky stuff we have uh, in our captions. But thank you to uh, Yazan, Agent79, Dustin Joe, who wants a shout out for his newborn and his wife, 
Baby Jojo. Yeah, Raz, Baby Jojo. Yeah. Uh, Raj Rajan, hello. Nizma Performance also asked about HDR gaming, which we'll get to, as you yes. said. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Bass Polo. Nick Amarillo, who was wondering what we were talking about. Uh, so we're moving into game consoles in No Man's Sky. And Donut, who said he's going to subscribe. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You ever take apart one of these umbrellas? Oh, yeah. Weird yeah, they, stuff's in there. No, they, they don't stand up to uh, much close examination. Yeah, there's... You, they do next this, time, though. This is, they do do I that. Mean, you can do this for a long time. It doesn't get old. No. Next, I'm serious, everybody. Next time you get one of these, open it up. Well, first, enjoy it. Right. Enjoy it for the service it provides. But then open it up and, like... There's some stuff in here. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. It's it sounds unnatural. crazy. You'd be like, Jeff, what the hell are you talking about? Trust me. Uh, all right. Sony has invited press to an event on September 7th in New York City to announce, obviously, the PlayStation Neo. This is the step-up console from the PS4, which was dubbed uh, PS4.5. Nerdiest name. Ever. I didn't do it. Nerdiest name. Ever. Did you do it? No. It's not your fault. It's, it's not, not my fault. Not he PS5. It's not the PS5. PS4.25. Could be. Feels like it. Maybe like a 0.37, something like that. So check out the rumored specs. Rumored specs for the uh, PlayStation Neo. Uh, 4K graphics for games in Ultra HD 4K Blu-rays. It'll Ooh. right. It'll rock a 2.1 gigahertz AMD uh, processor, processor with uh, Jaguar cores. Wow. Which I guess will just, that's like the cat like. Yeah, reflexes. they're not quite leopard cores. Right, yeah. not, we're not there yet. No. Uh, 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which is pretty good. Well, 16 would have been better. Support for all current games existing um, on the PS4 right now. So you're not going to buy this thing and not be able to play a game that had been on PS4 and vice versa, I, right? I was so, super worried about that. Thanks for clearing that up. Well, it's a big deal, right? <laughs> It's a big deal. Like people are like, "Oh, I'm not gonna be able to play a PS4 Neo game on my PS4." No, right? Don't worry. They're all gonna work. Yeah. The catch, though, is that PS4.5 slash Neo games probably gonna look and perform better. Okay. So there's that. Um, the events coming up. There's really not a ton to talk about with that, just because we've known about this for so many months going in. My biggest question is, will this impact? slash improve PlayStation VR. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something they're holding back. The messaging has been a little cloudy yeah. on whether or not they're going to do that. So for me, and don't forget, PlayStation VR comes out October 13th. What's that going to look like? Is this going to be really the system you want to play it on? Maybe not so much on standard PS4s. Especially since the specs for um, Oculus Rift and HTC Vive are... Mm -hmm. I think considerably higher than what a PlayStation 4, if the, a PlayStation 4 is a PC. Absolutely are way higher, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would imagine maybe that PS4.5 catches up. It's still nowhere near the modern state-of-the-art GPUs, but maybe it narrows the gap just a little bit. Yeah, and, and you got to say, if, if they do make it you know, slightly better, is that going to be now immediately, or are developers going to take a while to, right. to implement that extra VR horsepower and maybe be a couple years down the road before you start to see differences between the two? Totally, and there's, there's a lot to unpack here. It's not something we can do in the few minutes we have here, but, but the way you got to think about it is Sony basically told all the developers who make video games, they said, look, we got this more powerful thing coming out in a couple months, they're kind of decreeing that everything that comes out, I believe it's October or September, anything that comes out that month and beyond must support both sort of spec sets, right? Yeah. So like this game's got to work a certain way on Neo and it's got to work a certain way on PS4 Vanilla. Yeah. I'm curious if they can get it to actually make regular games, who cares about VR, make regular PS4 games look really good. I mean, right. There's some like... Trick they like can backfill do. that. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Do what a, a, a place or a, a PC uh, gaming uh, rig can do, right. and, and and just you know up the and, and make it better with 4K. Obviously, For sure. take advantage of the fact that it's got 4K resolution instead of just you know make it look exactly the same as a PS4. We'll see how it all shakes out. September yeah. 7th, not that far away. A few questions. Of course, are it's the same day as the iPhone 7 thing. I swear to God, these guys just want us dead. Which one's more exciting, yeah. gang? Oh, it's <laughs> iPhone, and PlayStation. <laughs> I don't know. Here. It's the less, what's the lesser of two yeah. evils right there? Uh, uh, someone's, uh, Jerry wants to know, um, if, if, why should he, should he buy Neo if he doesn't own a 4K TV? Which is probably a relevant question. Oh, yeah. It's a relevant matter. question. I think you're still gonna, you are still going to get graphical improvements on your regular TV. Like That's something that 
it's tough to sort of suss out. You know, mm. I think we kind of like... We won't know until we can test them, yeah. What's that? We won't know until we can actually look at yeah, them. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, odds are you're going to get better performance uh, coming from a PS4 to a Neo. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to get it. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll sort of be able to suss that out once we get our hands on it. But the on paper, the reason you'd want to upgrade is to get that graphical jump up from a PS4 plus possibly future-proof yourself if you do one day want to buy there a 4K go. TV. Yeah. And we have um, two Xbox-oriented questions, yeah, sure. too. Agent wants to know if you guys think Microsoft's right now hyping up their plans for people. To, he doesn't want to go to Xbox One S, but he, I guess he's thinking about the one after that for next year. Right. Then Nick wants to know if he should switch from PlayStation. Uh, if, <laughs> if he only has a PlayStation. That's a you question. Right. But those are machines. So it never uh, floats your boat. Yeah, like, you know, switching consoles, that's kind of up to you. You, you got to go by, like, the value and the games, really. For me, it's the games. Like, if the games that you want to play are on one platform, go to that platform. And if all your friends are on one platform, that's another big thing. Exactly. Yeah. Being able to play with them, with your friends, is a big deal. So yeah. most people like to play on the same platform their friends are on. Uh, when it comes to, uh, what was the first one, if Xbox is ramping up their... If Scorpio they are trying to like, hype up, I guess by putting out, like, yeah. hey, we're doing this, but next year we have this bigger system. Yeah, it's definitely strange that Xbox One S kind of was was out with the knowledge that Scorpio is uh, on the horizon. Mm-hmm. I think uh, their hand was forced a little bit in terms of having to be transparent about what their roadmap looks like. Nevertheless... Any kind of publicity for those guys these days in this generation of consoles is probably good. They have not been able to sell as many consoles as Sony has. Um, so, yeah, we're that's gonna talk- That's a good segue, right? I mean, a Scorpio seems to me like, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the question mark here, because it's still the one nobody's defined yet. Right, so and that really is the way it's sort of shaping up, right? Mm-hmm. The landscape is Scorpio's coming out late next year. Mm-hmm. The current Xbox One is likely gonna drop in price. PlayStation 4 Neo seems like it's going to be a thing this year. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, how does it all, you know, kind of shake out? Yeah. Um, I guess another question we're getting a lot is who should buy the Xbox One S and kind of said no, nobody. Well, the thing is, we were talking about HDR before. So the Xbox One S is currently the cheapest uh, 4K Blu-ray player. Mm -hmm. So uh, this happened with PS3. It was the cheapest blu-ray player right and it was by far the best at the time and it helped really make blu-ray a decent you know relevant format for a few years um i think xbox one s doesn't really have that same sort of opportunity just because streaming is so much more popular yep. now than discs but if you're that guy that just bought a 4k tv and you want to have the best you know video quality experience the xbox one s uh is is less expensive by you know 75 100 bucks than the, the other 4k blu-ray player by samsung that's out right now so that's, that's one reason. Sure. Uh, but it's a pretty niche reason. It's a pretty niche reason. And, you know, you and I had certainly an interesting time trying yes. to get it to work the right way. Mm-hmm. Took a really long time to get HDR to play right. Yeah. Even, even things as simple as, like, getting that 4K resolution to first sort of show up yeah. involved a bunch of updating and unplugging and handshaking and whatnot. And playing in the settings menu. And there's yeah, a lot of stuff in there that's tough to comprehend. You're going to have people. to dive a little deep. It's not very user-friendly. Right. Um, I, you know, someone brought up before about HDR in games, mm-hmm. and is that a thing? Mm-hmm. It is, but so, uh, Xbox is only going to have three games that support it kind of out of the gate, and I believe that's Forza Horizon 3, Gears of War 4, and then next year, a game called Scalebound. Mm-hmm. So that's three games that are going to support HDR. Is that worth the new TV, the new Xbox? Probably not, unless you have a f- kind of disposable income. Yeah, yeah. So think about it like that. Uh, Xbox One S, weird kind of system. It's the best looking one they've ever made. There you go. Give you that. It's a sexy little box. If you're into that. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's where we're at. Any other questions? Yeah, Agent wants to post you guys um, with so much news about the future. There's always rumor speculation news sure. going on. Um, who do you think would be the victor if we can declare one? I don't, it's a little early. And does it really matter in the long term future of gaming? Well, I think it does if you're looking to see like where these companies go next. Uh, are they talking about a victor between Xbox uh, Project Scorpio and Neo? Uh, yeah, let's, it's like they're targeting the future with that. Yeah, well, I mean, look, you got to look at the way it is now. These are not brand new consoles. They're simply step-up consoles. So, 
uh, PS4 right now is the better selling console. In my opinion, it is the better experience, mm -hmm. uh, and they do seem to have the better library of games. Yeah. So I would imagine that trend would, would follow through in the next you know, four or five years, however long we're headed with this uh, sort of uh, you know, lifespan. But the wild card and, and Scorpio's advantage is the fact sure. that it's coming out later. They can give it better specs, right. and, and they can tell the developers, like, take advantage of these better specs, and maybe will that manifest more in VR? Right, you know? exactly, and, which is a and, big part of this. And which is such a crazy, you know, uh, resource hog. Yeah. You know? Like, to make a good VR experience requires, you know, crazy good hardware. So I, I think at least there's that, that Xbox's later release date with Scorpio gives them a potential advantage on paper. For sure. I think they are a little further out. Yeah. In terms, you know, I think calling it a holiday 2017 thing mm -hmm. is sort of wishful thinking. <laughs> I hope it comes out then and it sees the light of day then, but... If you're a betting man, no, holiday 2017? I think it would really put them at a disadvantage if they weren't able to meet that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so it'll come I'm, out no matter what. I'm hoping it comes out. Even yeah. if it doesn't have a fourth wall, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that, bring that thing out. David, about how much do you think the, um, it's, a, it's a question from earlier, but it bridges mm -hmm. over now. Somebody wants to get a television that would take advantage of the 4K gaming and they'd be, if HDR color can get into there, how much do you think they'd be spending about now if they wanted a TV? Well, there's a, there's a huge range. Um, so right now my favorite TV for the money is a Vizio P series that starts at a uh, thousand bucks for 50 inches. And it's 4K, it's got both HDR formats, great picture. The very best picture, though, is OLED, which is a lot more expensive. LG's OLED TVs. But man, that thing is good. I mean, it's so good, you're like, man, maybe I can't afford 25 <laughs> Maybe I should yeah. remortgage. Yeah, so the 65-inch OLED is between, you know, five and $6,000 yeah. now for, the, for this generation. And spectacular picture, but way out of most people's price range. So most people are buying LED LCDs. That Vizio is really good. You don't like the Vizio. There's a, a Samsung that's pretty decent, a Sony that I reviewed recently. If you go on the website, you'll see them. But yeah, I mean, all those TVs are as future-proof as they can be. They, mm -hmm. They've got the hardware. They're, the hardware's still ahead of the software, the, the, the TV shows and movies at this point. Um, and the games, you just cited only three HDR games. So, you know, it, it, you buy one of these TVs, you're gonna be set. Yeah, I mean, and also, I feel like we always have to kind of like pepper in these disclaimers. Xbox One S, right now, you cannot play native 4K yes. games. Yes. That is not a thing. Uh, all that's happening is an upscaling. Yep. So keep that in the back of your mind. One other question we got. Sure. Um, but it's more kind of, a, it's, a, it's a joke, but a good joke. Okay. Um, do either of you own a tube TV? I actually still do because it's the only one that my PlayStation 2 will connect to. My parents have more than they should in, in, in their mm. house. Wow. Mm. Yeah. They That's have a like, big negatory. I think they have two. Yeah. And I've tried. It's just a lost cause with them. Just one day, just take it out to the curb and don't tell them. It's heavy. Don't You yeah, forget how the heavy problem. they are, man. Yeah. They've got like a 40 inch and that's yeah. not... Light. No. 40 inch tube? That yeah. Mitsubishi, right? Yeah, oh, the that Mitsubishi. thing is a crazy oh, television. That was the largest mm -hmm. television made, I'm pretty sure. I was like turning it into a fish tank or something. Yeah, no, like, that thing, that's that's a that's a, you can't even get that out of the house. Right. You yeah. just I you just have, have to like the house we have to like start sawing it in half yeah, and no. taking it out by pieces. That's a beast. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's pivot into No Man's Sky. That's the big uh, news this month in terms of gaming. Uh, for no, people who don't know what No Man's Sky is, it is a very ambitious space exploration game that kind of took the gaming world by storm, if only because people kind of projected these maybe unrealistic expectations on so what this excited. game <laughs> was going to wind up being, <laughs> including David Katzmeyer. So excited. He's very excited to I'm play I'm taking it. off right after the show, running home and downloading it because the Steam is actually available now. See on Twitter, people yes. are asking people to go to their houses and download the, the game for them so it's ready when they oh, get home really? from work. Oh, really? Okay. But it's, it's not it's, that big of a game. It's going to so be one of those quick. weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing it for about 15 hours. It's It's different. Uh, I think for a lot of people, it's a game that they weren't expecting. Mm. And again, that is not a throw, that is not throwing shade at the developers. I think this game kind of got away from everybody. Uh, and once that big sort of E3 demo happened a couple years ago, it kind of blew everyone's minds and completely changed the perception of what this game actually is and what people kind of wanted it to be. So I get that, and that's understandable. Uh, at its core, No Man's Sky is really just 
a resource survival ma survival game, uh, inventory management game. Oh. I know that was that's like the trio kiss of death <laughs> right there. Uh, there are moments in this game that you will literally, you know, not believe what you're seeing. Yeah. But after a while, you kind of understand what this game's about. Uh, I feel terrible saying this because I'm sitting next to someone who is very excited to play it for the first I, time. I, I am still excited regardless of how many times you tell yes, me that. Yes, which yeah. is great. Yeah. And you should be because I, the I, first couple hours are great. I will offer my own disappointment. Yeah, no. like I, I gonna, think, I think you'll like so it. I'm so sad on Monday when I come in. And I think upgrades for you, though. The PC in. version might take advantage of better specs. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, they're usually really similar. It's, that's, it, that might be, but the game might look better. Yeah. That might... Be it though. It's not going to mm -hmm. change gameplay. Mm -hmm. It's not going to bring you to a level where you're like, oh, this game offers a different feature set on PC. At mm -hmm. least not at the beginning. I mean, it, it, yeah. I don't know if there's modding or whatever, but at the end of the day, these guys are also saying they're going to improve aspects of this game. One Absolutely. of the big selling points for me was like, they're, they're, it's a community, it's a vibe, basically like a big mama porg, even though you can't actually uh, you know, interact with people right. in the environment or whatever. There's so many cool things about the game that made me really intrigued. I mean, it, it's it, obviously the biggest thing is every planet you go to is spontaneously created for you. Which is kind of cool. And, right. and for me, that, that, like, the reason I'm going to go back and play some of that again this weekend is because I just like rolling the dice. Yeah. I just like seeing what the game spits out. It's something technically no one else will ever see. So that's kind of fun. Just the notion of like, hey, the, the, the math that this game is relying on right. allows it to create stuff that odds are no one else will ever see. So you use the analogy of dice. So it's like, you know, you roll a six, it's a blue sky. You roll a one, it's a yellow sky. Pretty and much. On down the line. So is, is, is part of your beef that there's not enough dice? There's not yeah. enough stuff that can be different about I, each world? Like, is it too similar despite the fact that they say there's, whatever, 19 quadrillion possible worlds that people can get to? And that's, yes. Uh, simply put, like, yes, that is the complaint. It, it's because... The, the asset pool that this game continually draws from mm -hmm. doesn't allow, and I get it, like, it's an, it is an achievement what these guys have done at Hello Games. Like, this right. is a technical achievement. At the same time, though, because of that and what they did, it, uh, the game does not allow for the variance that people kind of project where it's like, oh, every pl this could be anything. Like, mm -hmm. it's just not that. Uh, there's different terrain. The first time I landed on like what was mostly a water planet right. was pretty cool for yeah, me. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I think like that's what you got to kind of keep in the back of your head because after you play for about five, six, seven hours, you're gonna see the same kind of stuff. You get it. You understand like what's happening here. Yeah. Every now and then I'm like, oh look at that. Yeah. There's uh, there's this here. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Again, the sense of scale for me is the best part of this game. This game treats you like you are this uh, small atomic little thing in a gigantic, seemingly endless, endless universe. So for me, yeah. that sense of scale, they nail it. They and nail it. It's so interesting because that's like the thing that video games kind of have done recently. Like I always think of Witcher as like okay. the largest game world I've sure. ever experienced where you, you're like all of a sudden you're in this other island that's huge. Right. And, and some dudes went out and made all of that by hand. Right. Every so, little turn on the, on the trail as you're riding along and, and even the DLC is gigantic right. on that game. And it's so big that I still haven't explored every part of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, you know, it, and it seems like every time you go, there's something new and different. Right. With this, it's obviously infinite, basically. Yeah, it's essentially infinite. And when you look at something like The Witcher, you're right. Every square inch of that map was drawn yeah. and rendered and put together and preconceived. And it's gigantic. And it's gigantic where No Man's Sky, it's sort of just like, hey, here's this, you know, blender we have. Let's stop it and see where it stops. And that's kind of like mm -hmm. the best way I can explain it to people. Harold's wondering if you guys think, because uh, if it would be too taxing on PCs, which you're to discover, do you, did you think it was just, um, taxing when you were playing on PS4? There's a couple times where you hit some pretty significant frame rate, frame rate dips. Uh, PC, Even it's going to be fine. Though. It's going to be fine. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it taxes the PS4 hardware, and I think... At points, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe Neo will do a better job with No Man's Sky. <laughs> uh, but I don't think the way to think about it is like, oh, this is going to run super smooth on PC either. I don't think the 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 sort of like ecology within the game mm -hmm. is open to like vari variable, you know, sort of improvements just based on the hardware running it. I don't know. 
that's sort of the vibe we get. There's a lot of like texture drawing that you'll probably wind up seeing uh, in the in the PS4 version that maybe you won't see in the PC stuff. I don't know yet. And, and it's I mean as with all usually a PC release, you know, there's there's going to be bugs. Sure. You know, and, and, and there's bugs in the PS4 vast, version. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm not expecting a totally smooth weekend yeah. because obviously there's that huge day zero patch, right. which I think is baked into the Steam. It's definitely version, baked into the Steam. So yeah. like I won't have to worry about that, but. You know, it's it's still not. I don't think it's going to be the smooth experience, and I don't expect most day one games to be perfect. Yeah, I always patch them. So I'm definitely curious to hear what you're saying Monday morning. Yeah. for sure. There's a few people asking about availability for the games. I, I, they are wondering about um, if it was available on early access for Steam. I, no. And uh, consoles, which is PS4. Right yeah, now? just PS4 and PC. Mm-hmm. That's no all. No Xbox will, announced, right? Yeah, I would. Uh, that's going to probably Ouch. not be a thing. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I couldn't. Yeah. I remember reading that, going, "Why? Why? That's." Yeah, I don't know. You got. You can infer what you want. Maybe Sony uh, paid for some of that development. That's yeah. just speculation. Mm-hmm. And Harold followed up. He was wondering if it's essentially a pretty walking sim. Uh, you know, you're walking for uh, some of it in the beginning, uh, but then it's kind of like a, f- a flying sim mm-hmm. for a lot of the rest of that game. Warping sim. It, what's that? Warping sim. Warping sim. Yeah. Warp cell mm-hmm. sim. Nice. Yep. So there's uh, No Man's Sky, uh, if there's anything else or no. Yeah, do you guys think it was overhyped? One of the persons, one of the people earlier in our chat was wondering why are we doing so much news about No Man's Sky, and it was a very big, a very big driver of news this week. But of do you course. think over the course of the last three years it was overhyped versus what you were playing now? Definitely. Everything's overhyped. So, like, let's not, <laughs> it's not exclusive to No Man's Sky. Everything is overhyped. It's the things that supersede expectation that really are, are the remarkable things, right? Um, most things are, are overhyped, <clears throat> Suicide Squad. So I feel like you Oof. have to really take it for what it's worth. Like this game, I think it's more remarkable that this game had that reaction. Uh, and again, like we talked about earlier, you can't fault anyone for it. Like you can't look at the developers and be like, you guys made something that seemed too cool. <laughs> you, you should have talked down your game. Man. Yeah. I can't believe you that. You shouldn't have enjoyed the, the three-year awesome. roller coaster yeah. that was you know, leading up to the release. No. Was it overhyped? Absolutely. So you're saying not game of the year? It is, I do not believe that will be game of the year. Really? Yeah. No Man's Sky. And then Dustin wants to see your leg tattoo. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> it's funny. I, uh, I'm wearing shorts today because it is 111 degrees in New York City today. Mm, I don't really wear shorts too much, but Mm -hmm. today I just had to do it. I'm sorry. It's steamy outside. It's steamy in Katz's house. And and Jeff is an avowed cold person. Yeah. You you should be like living in Buffalo or something. I should be living in a grocery store freezer. Right. In Quebec. Yeah, that's what I have to do. (laughs) All right, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for joining us on another edition of Open Tab. Have an excellent, safe, and fun weekend. Keep the conversation going in the chat and comments. Thank you to the one and only David Katzmeyer, Mike Sorrentino, Tom, and Brian in the studio. Hey, bye, Tom, intern Tom. Take care, buddy. Oh, you were the Say best. Bye. Bye. Oh. Jake as well. We really did have like the greatest uh, crew of interns yeah. this uh, yeah. season. Their so. awesomeness was inverse of the fourth mm-hmm. their time. Totally. So they thanks helped. again to everybody <laughs> watching at home. They Everyone catch that. I hope you caught that. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye.